Welcome everyone, my name's Liz and let's jump into our first project. So for this project we are going to take a square sign that you can get from the Dollar Tree. I'm going to cut off the jute hanger and I'm going to flip my sign over to the back to use the back as our sign. So I'm going to take the Waverly chalk paint in silver lining and I'm going to give this sign a good one solid coat. I wasn't too worried about it being completely covered. After I've done that, I'm going to take my Waverly chalk paint in Elephant and I'm going to use that to distress my sign. It's just about a shade darker of a gray, so this is perfect for distressing. I go over all the edges and I run my brush through this whole sign itself. Now I'm going to take this wood round that I got from Hobby Lobby and I am going to use this to draw three circles on my sign. I want to make sure that my circles are overlapping so that you can tell that there are three different circles on the sign. Once I've done that I'm going to take my Waverly chalk paint and plaster and you're going to go over the lines that you drew previously just to thicken those up a bit so that you can really see those circles. Now I'm going to take this stencil that I got from Joann's and I'm just going to cut out the saying in the middle. I don't think I would have ever used the dots around it. They are really cute, just not my kind of style, but I absolutely love this saying. So I'm going to cut that out. I'm going to place it where I want it and I'm going to use some painter's tape to tape it down. I also taped over any of the remaining circles that were on the stencil just so that I didn't accidentally get paint in them and then have a little circle on my sign. Now once I've done that, I'm gonna take a sponge brush and my Waverly chalk paint in plaster and I'm gonna start painting this in. I'm just using a dabbing motion just so that you don't get any paint underneath the stencil going up and down is a lot better when you're using a stencil. So at first I use my sponge brush and then I'm gonna go in with an actual paintbrush to get in those really small lines where the sponge brush couldn't get in. And again, I'm just using that dabbing motion to get all the paint into all the words. Now I'm going to take this ribbon that you can get from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to start making a bow. I am going to cut two loops out. One is going to be slightly bigger than the other and I'm just going to hot glue the ribbon together so that it makes a loop. I'm going to cut out a piece for my tails. I'm going to take a piece of twine and I'm going to tie all three pieces together. I'm going to put the smallest loop on top, the biggest loop in the middle, and then the tails on the bottom. I'm going to take these florals that you can get from the Dollar Tree and then this greenery that you can get from Walmart and I'm just going to start hot gluing these down. I just kind of played around with it until I got it to look the way that I wanted it. And then once I get all those florals down, I am going to put a dab of hot glue in the middle and add my bow. I am going to dovetail the ends of my bow and cut off the extra twine. I'm going to add another twine hanger to my sign, just tying a knot on the front on each side. And that is it for this super cute home sign. If you guys are new, hey, my name's Liz. If you love all things DIY and crafting, consider subscribing to my channel and stay tuned for all the fun future videos that I have. You can stay up to date with me on Instagram and Facebook and see more of my DIYs and things that I am up to and making. And don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up if you're enjoying it so far. For this next project, I'm going to take my Craft Smart stain in the shade gray and I am going to start 
art. Staining all of these pieces of wood, I will have all the dimensions listed in the description box below. Basically, you're going to use a 1x2 to cut out four pieces for the roof of your houses and then just some scrap wood and just cut them to the shape of a house. I did stain all of my pieces of wood in this color, but the, the two house pieces they were a different color than the roof pieces, so for one of them, I did add on the stain and I let the stain sit there for quite a while so that the wood would really soak in that color. And then for my smaller house, I'm going to take my Waverly chalk paint and plaster and I'm going to give this a good two coats using my heat gun in between coats. Now, for whatever reason, one of the files on this particular DIY ended up not working. It was corrupt and it wouldn't let me see it. So there is a part that is going to skip. So for my smaller house, all that I did was add some horizontal lines using a ruler across the house. And then I went over those lines with some gray chalk paint. And then for my bigger house, I ended up painting in the middle using the Waverly chalk paint in agave, I made sure to leave a border around the house because I did want that gray to show through. And then I just took some sandpaper to both houses and roughed them up a little bit. So I'm going to take these rub-on transfers that you can get from the Dollar Tree. I am going to cut out a couple of them to put on my smaller house. And all I'm going to do is press them to my house and where I want them to be. You just rub them on and then you peel off the clear plastic on the top. To glue the roofs to the houses, I'm going to use a combination of some clear Gorilla Glue and some wood glue hot glue. After I've done that, I'm gonna take some twine, I'm gonna wrap it around the small house about four times, and then I'm gonna tie a little bow on the side. I'm then gonna take this decal that I cut out using my Cricut. I thought this was super cute, so I just added it to my blue house. You could use stickers or you could use a stencil. And this is how my little farmhouse houses turned out. For this next project, you're gonna take this print that you can get from the Dollar Tree. I absolutely love the prints that they've been coming out with recently. They are super farmhouse and so cute, but sometimes I just wanna jazz them up a little bit give them a different frame into something that I like a little bit more. So I decided to take this print out of the frame and I removed the cardboard backing and the picture itself. I'm going to take some foam core board to make my sign a little bit more sturdy and I'm going to trace out to the exact size that the cardboard is. And then I cut out four pieces to use as a frame. These are square dowels that you can get from Home Depot or Lowe's. I will also leave the dimensions of those pieces in the description box below. So I just measured it all up to make sure it was all going to fit nicely. Now I'm going to take my glue stick and I'm going to glue the cardboard down to the foam board. And then I'm going to glue the picture down to the cardboard. I just wanted to give this sign a little bit more strength so that it wasn't just a piece of cardboard and a picture. I didn't want it to bend easily, so that's the reason why I put the foam board on the back. I'm going to stain all four pieces of my frame in my Craftsmart stain in gray. And then using my hot glue wood glue, I am going to glue my sign to the frame. I started with the side pieces first and then with the top and the bottom after that so that you weren't trying to fit a piece in between two longer pieces. And then to add a little bit more stability, I'm going to take a popsicle stick and use some hot glue to give it a little bit more support on the back. I just made sure that those were on the foam board and on the wood frame itself. And that is it for this super cute Dollar Tree farmhouse sign. 
Now for this last project, I wanted to try my hand at making my own windmill. I know that a lot of people weren't able to find those ones that the Dollar Tree had. So I just started by making myself a little template and cutting out six blades from my foam board. My blades were about two and a half inches long and then I just doubled the length from one side to the other on each end of the blade. Once I had all six of those cut out and then I also did cut out a half of a circle for the middle portion, I went in with my steel chalk paint from Waverly. I gave all of it one coat. Now after I've done that, I'm gonna take my elephant chalk paint from Waverly and I'm gonna give these a galvanized look. I'm gonna take this stippling brush and I'm just gonna begin stippling on each blade and the half circle. I'm also gonna go in with my white chalk paint and stipple on top of that. And then once I'm getting the look that I want, I kind of mix the gray and the white together and stipple on top of that as well. And then to give it more of a rusted look, I'm going to go in with my Waverly Wax in Antique and I'm going to go around all the edges of all my blades. And to kind of blend it in a little bit more, I'm just going to take my finger and run over that wax to kind of smudge it around and blend it in. Now I'm going to take six skewer sticks that you can also get from the Dollar Tree. I'm going to do the same painting technique as I did with my blades. Start with the steel color, add on the elephant, and then the white. Now I'm going to start by cutting out my skewer sticks. I'm going to use my miter shears to do this, and I'm just cutting out the length that I need in between each blade and the half circle. I'm going to add some hot glue to each end, and I'm going to start by putting each little skewer stick piece into the blade. Once I've got all of those on there, I'm just gonna start assembling my windmill by adding some hot glue to the other end of my skewer stick and pushing it into that half circle. I'm gonna grab that wire that I had and I'm going to form it into the shape of a half circle and put it on the back of my windmill, adding some hot glue to secure it down. Now I'm gonna take this picture frame that you can get from the Dollar Tree, I'm gonna take it apart and I'm gonna take the little clip from the back off. I'm going to use the back of the frame to cut out some scrapbook paper that I got from Hobby Lobby. I absolutely love this scrapbook paper. I've been super obsessed with the herringbone pattern lately, so I had to use it in this video. I'm gonna add some glue to the back of my frame sign, and I'm gonna add that scrapbook paper to the front. And then I'm going to paint the frame in my Waverly chalk paint in plaster, and I'm gonna give it a good two coats. I'm going to insert the back of the sign back into the frame and then I'm going to give it a little bit more distressing to the frame. I'm going to take my antique wax and I'm just going to run over all the edges of the frame from the inside of the frame to the outside and then on all four corners. I'm going to take my hot glue again, add a couple dabs to the back of my windmill and add it to my sign. And that is it for this cute farmhouse windmill sign.
And that's it for today's video. Let me know your thoughts on my projects and what your favorite was in the comments down below. Don't forget to subscribe before you guys leave. Give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoyed it, and I'll see you in my next one. Bye!